Have you ever watched an Undertale no-hit run and wondered whether or not a no-hit pacifist run is possible? Trust me, you're not the only one who asks that because I guarantee that every time a top Undertale runner does a no-hit of some sort, that question gets asked all the time. I've done Undertale challenges for over four years now, which includes the base game, which is the topic of this video. And as you may have already seen from the title and thumbnail, from my point of view and the opinion of so many other top runners, a no-hit true pacifist run will probably never happen. Probably being in bold and quotation marks. Before we begin, I'm going to be playing Asriel in the background, for reasons I'll explain in a minute, and also so you can see how no-hitting Undertale usually goes. Maybe that interests you, maybe not, but I really don't recommend you try this for yourself. So let's get down to business. What makes this run so hard in the first place? Aside from its incredible length of two hours under no-hit conditions, and yes, it has been cleared much faster by runners like Shay, but those are speed runs that take on damage on purpose to save time, so obviously this wouldn't be allowed in no-hit runs, so we cannot take any easy ways out of encounters like Toriel or Papyrus. Luckily though, no hitting them alone isn't too hard, but doing them both in the same run can be tiresome as Ruins and Snowden are incredibly boring. Okay, enough about the time. What about the difficulty? Well, there are two ways to get a pacifist no hit run. True Reset and New Game Plus. True Reset is a fresh save file starting from the very beginning. No cutscenes are skipped, no bosses are skipped, Nothing is skippable without exploits. It's a full run from start to finish, no ifs, ands, or buts. New Game Plus, however, is different. New Game Plus makes some parts skippable and cuts out one of the more problematic bosses, Phimega Flowey. Yeah, I know, it's actually Photoshop Flowey, so I'm satisfying both the Omega and Photoshop fans by combining the two together. I'm not shipping, so don't at me. Anyway, why is Flowey so difficult? Now this point will also be important later on, and I'm pretty sure this has already been beaten into the ground multiple times by plenty of people in the past, but Flowey is actually designed to be an unfair boss. The fight was designed in such a way that passing it for the first time would be really tough, as proven by Let's Plays by people such as Jack Septicai. Even though Flowey is an unfair battle, he can be mastered. To an extent. Over 30 people have done a full no-hit Flowey from start to finish, which is really cool. However, that doesn't excuse the fact that this fight has to be done, no hit in a true reset run. Of course, in New Game Plus, we don't have to worry about that because we can just skip him, but skipping bosses is not favoured by the no hit community, even if it means we make the run just a tad bit shorter and easier. Of course, it's different with optional bosses like Jevil and Deltarune, but when the boss becomes a mandatory story element, that's where things get a bit weird. And even if he is mastered, Flowey is still hard because he is at the very end of a neutral run, which is a mandatory requirement for getting true pacifist. Neutral Hitless has been done by a small handful of players, myself included. I'm not one to brag, but I've done it a total of four times, and I promise that this will be relevant right now. I promise you. After doing neutral, the player is supposed to do the true lab before fighting Asriel. Now, true lab alone is hard because the patterns are weird, and when you throw RNG into the mix, You've got yourself a right mess. Fortunately though, it doesn't take too long to do True Lab Hitless, but we are talking inwards of an hour and 30 minutes inside a no-hit run. Usually, you're supposed to keep an eye on your soul and any projectile that is heading your way, but by this point, your nerves are totally shot, so you say, screw it, and just do whatever you can to avoid being cornered or hit. And then when you do make it past True Lab, you have Asriel to deal with. Yeah, background footage, I know. On the surface, Asriel doesn't seem like that difficult of a boss, but again, weird patterns and unfair intentions as you can already see on screen right now. It's even worse in phases 2 and 4 where you're meant to side read every single comet that comes your way because of their random trajectories. Apparently it is possible to master this, but that hardly helps with the biggest issue. Phase 4. Phase 4 alone is what puts almost everyone off of no-hitting the full Asriel battle, and we have to do this in order for no-hit true pacifist to be realistic. In Phase 4, you basically have to pray you don't get hit, which 99.9% .9 of the time, you will. This does unfortunately mean that there are more people who have no-hit Undertale Last Breath Phase 3 than there are people who have no-hit Asriel, both of which have the same issue, which is having to pray to RNGs at the very end of a run. 
Even if we did New Game Plus, that doesn't solve the issue, as we would need to get back there every single time we wanted a chance at securing the run. After all, the BKS only gives us a two-hit run, and that's still very far away from the run we're trying to achieve. Now let's stop worrying about the difficulty and look at the current progress we've made so far. The best run that was ever achieved was a four-hit run by me back in December of 2023. This might sound like great progress, but it's actually just a very small dent on what's possible. Getting below that will unfortunately require getting lucky with current strats, and this means that we'd have to do multiple runs in one session. We're talking at least 7 hours per session before we can expect to see a single chance of getting a PB, let alone actually getting it. Even though this run is theoretically possible, the current BKS is only a two-hit run, and it's unlikely that this will go down for a while. Now what is BKS you may ask? It stands for Best Known Segments, and these are the best performances ever done by a human in a real run. This isn't done in practice, which is different, it is done in full game runs, or to put it simply, they are the best segments that have ever been achieved when attempting a full no-hit run. And that only gives us a two-hit run, which means that getting lucky would be required to get this down more, whether it be one hit or the magic number of zero hits. And it's more than just luck as well. Every attempt has to make it past neutral hitless, which means that raw skill is definitely required. But even in these spots there are RNG problems, like with the Royal Guards' star attack, or Toriel using the wrong box size. Really, Toby? Really? Now some of you might be thinking, well, can't you just play a little bit better? Can't they just go a little bit faster? Or whatever. Of course, it is possible to get the PB down lower using skill, but even just getting close to it is so incredibly difficult. We only have one run that has ever made it to Asriel, while only three of these attempts have passed neutral. Plenty of people are trying their hardest to make the endgame easier, but so far none of their efforts have actually paid off, and currently it seems like we're at a complete roadblock. People have suggested new strategies to try and make the run easier, which I really appreciate them for, but unfortunately no strats have ever been found that make True Lab and Asriel easier. Well, there is the hitboxing in Reaper Bird which is pretty funny, but that's the best we've got. There are no more strategies that we know, and of course, if we if we if there were any more strats that had potential to make this run more accessible, we could just try them out, but so far it doesn't look like there's anything left to experiment with. So what can we do to improve the current best? Not much, because the end game is an unpredictable gauntlet. The only way we can realistically get further at this current time is to just use brute force, which is the most taxing, but at the same time it's the most profitable. It's kind of a double-edged sword. We want to get further, but we can only do that if we put our backs into it and grind it like there is no tomorrow. And there is still the issue of getting past True Lab in the first place just to have a shot at basically a 1 in a thousand chance. And we can only make these odds better if we do find more strategies somehow, or if there's some sort of RNG manipulation like we heavily believe in. Hell, if Taz can do it, why not us? So that's my explanation as to why everyone thinks that True Pacifist will probably never happen. Now, if you remember, I said probably in bold and quotation marks, because while we don't believe that it's ever going to happen, there is a very slim chance that it will actually happen. We still don't know how long it will take, or if we'll ever get bored and give up at some point, or if it will ever be completed at all. Plenty of people are still dreaming for a no-hit true pacifist, and trust me, the people who run Undertale's base game want it the most. Every time I play through this game, I want it to happen as well. We have made good progress so far, but for now, I just don't think it's happening. And there you have it. That is my opinion on no-hit true pacifist as a whole. And I know people are going to disagree, and that's fine. Everyone has their own opinions. People don't believe that it will ever happen, while people are just waiting for that one day where the stars align, and we do manage to pull it off. As you can see, I unfortunately didn't get an Asriel no-hit in this video, who would have guessed? But I do hope you enjoyed my commentary, and let me know if you have any opinions on the matter. If you have any ideas on what strategies we could try out, then you might be credited as a hero if it ends up working. I know that's a very strong word, calling you heroes, but... Every little bit helps. Alright, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.